Hey, welcome back to my channel, guys. Today, I thought I'd talk about 9-11. This video will air on 9-11 in the US, and I just thought I would share my personal story as to what it was like uh, when 9-11 hit as an American. I know most of my audience are New Zealanders or Australians, and so I thought that this might be an interesting topic just to hear about what it was like um, actually living there and going through it. Uh, and some other interesting stories I'm going to share as well in relation to that whole topic. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. Stay tuned, subscribe below, here we go. Where was I 9-11 uh, when the attacks happened on the World Trade Center? I was 25 at the time. I was just pregnant with my first child and I was teaching at the university uh, in Milwaukee and I remember it so clearly. Um, basically, I was teaching and one of my students raised her hand. The student that, you know, always is trying to get out of doing whatever we're doing in class. And he was like, a plane just, you know, rammed into the World Trade Center. And I was like, okay. Anyway, moving on, <laughs> like totally didn't believe him. Like he was like, uh, then he raised his hand. Yeah, no, really, a plane just went into the World Trade Center. And I'm like, okay, well, obviously the, the pilot was, you know, something happened and that's horrible. Uh, but we're going to continue this lesson because he was just, to me, I felt like he was just trying to get out of it. And it didn't, you know, at that point when the first plane came, we didn't, you know, nobody knew it was a terrorist attack, right? So, uh, and then, you know, what was it? I don't know, about 20 minutes later, another student raised hand, another plane hit the other tower. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and so we all kind of stopped and tried to figure it out. And it was different back in 2001. Like, I mean, there was the internet, but it wasn't the same with smartphones and, uh, you got most of your information from the TV. <clears throat> so we ended class early and I was in grad school as well. So I ended up just deciding to go home and uh, study from there and doing what I needed to do. And I just remember spending the whole day sitting in front of the TV watching the news. And it was so interesting at the time because the news was just nobody knew what was happening. Like, I mean, you could just seeing it as it's developing, like the reporters, the anchor people on TV were just like, we don't know what's going on. And then when the towers come down, it was, it was shocking. And like, you can hear the reporters talking like, you know, nobody's anticipating any of this because it really required <clears throat> a mind shift. It was like, it's when something happens like that, that you can't even possibly like make up in your mind that this could ever happen, you don't know what to do with it. Your brain is like, I don't know what to do with this <laughs> information and making any sort of sense from it. So you can see that. Uh, if you watch the new uh, documentary on Netflix about 9-11, I haven't gotten through the whole thing, but uh, it's really good. And it reminds me, and you can see some of these TV broadcasts talking about, uh, yeah, talking like, you know, they're shocked. They don't really know what to say. They don't know how to define it. It was just kind of like a crazy turn of events and it was just horrible and you're just like watching it and and there was a lot of fear as to like is there going to be another one what's going to happen next if they can make this happen if they've gotten through our security or you know all of our uh, cia and fbi and anybody that would be paying attention to these terrorists like how is this happening and so yeah i just remember it being quite yeah, you just, you don't understand it. Your brain doesn't know how to handle it. I remember personally feeling like, you know, I'm about to bring a child into this world and extra stress with that, like just fear of safety. Like these people were just going to work that day. These people were just getting on a plane um, from multiple different cities. And, and so you're like, holy cow. And so you're just like mentally, like you just don't really know what to do with that and obviously i wasn't in new york i was in wisconsin i wasn't you know in the midst of it i didn't have anybody that would possibly have been in the tower but man it was just like it's just it's i just remember watching the tv and people having no idea what to think about this what to do about this about those people trapped in those upper uh those uh, upper floors that were above where the crash hit and oh my goodness and then seeing that plane go into the pentagon Oh my goodness, it was, 
it was an experience. Now I haven't had the chance to visit the site in New York City where it happened and the big memorial and I heard it's really, really cool and would really like to see that someday. Um, but yeah, I just remember feeling after that, like I think that the documentary expresses it well and that everybody felt scared, like traveling again, like do I get on a plane? Scared to be in a big city? Uh, scared to be in a, you know, a tall building? Um, I think people were angry. I think that we don't understand why somebody would hate us so much that they would do something like that. Like there was just so much we didn't understand. Uh, and now, you know, after the fact that you see a little bit of history with it, you know, it becomes a little bit more clear. Um, and then now that we've had 20 years, you know, we have a little bit more understanding of what's going on. And so it's, yeah, but I have to say as an, as an American, <clears throat> you know, and I haven't been in the U.S. in the last three years, so I didn't experience a pandemic. I didn't experience the last election um, personally, so I can't really speak to that. But I can say I remember after 9-11 was probably the last time I felt that our nation was united. Um, whether you like George Bush or not, I think we all felt united about... Um, about what just happened, that there's now, you know, a war on terror. Yeah, we all felt like this wasn't okay, that something needs to happen, something needs to come to justice, um, whether you think we handled it right or not, you know, in the moment at the time, you know, I, I, I guess I remember just feeling like uh, they were taking control of it and they were dealing with it. It wasn't just like this, you know, you felt like they were just speaking to you and not really doing anything or um, where I felt many times that way um, over other issues. But this one, we felt like everybody was rather united um, that, you know, leadership was stating that it was unacceptable and this is not OK. And, um, you know, justice needed to happen, whatever that is. And then, of course, soon after that became everybody opinions about how it should be handled and everybody kind of changed their thoughts about that. So, you know, that changes. But I just remember in that moment in after it happened, I felt very united uh, as a nation. Another story I'd like to share is something that happened in 2014 while working in New Zealand. Uh, so this is quite a bit after the 9-11 attacks and, you know, various things are happening in the Middle East between the U.S. and um, you know, Iran, Iraq, I get Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, like it was just, there's just a lot, like I'm not going to try to do a history lesson, but I'm just going to um, share with you a story, a true story that happened to me um, <clears throat> in New Zealand. So I was working uh, in Wellington City and we had hired a new lady who was from Baghdad. She was from Iraq. She was from Baghdad, from the capital city that we had troops in to try to, you know, manage the terrorists and to keep them out at the time. And or up really the couple of years before that, I think, you know, it's just like it's 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 fuzzy in my head, but it wasn't for her. So we she was coming around and meeting all the new people or all the people at work because she was new. And, um, you know, she was introduced to me and she was like, oh, are you American? And I was like, yep. And she was like, literally, no joke. She's from Baghdad. She like fell to the ground thank you, thank you, and like kind of grab my legs and like, thank you, thank you, thank you to your president who who brought in the troops and uh, for protecting us against, you know, whatever. She started listing all these names and I was like, wait, what? I mean, I was speechless. I was like, <laughs> of course, this is nothing really to do with me, but I represented to her the people that came and saved her. She's like, my whole family is in Baghdad. Your troops are protecting us. We get, you know, they would have no protection whatsoever, you know, without them being there and occupying that city. And, and she was like, can I have your whole family over for dinner? Can, can, what can I give you? And it was just like, I mean, just the, the emotion in her face, the plea, the thankfulness, the, anyway, Whatever you believe and think about this topic, about us, you know, Americans stepping in and um, protecting different uh, parts of the Middle East or 
you know, anything like that. Like, I don't know, I'm just sharing my story. That that was an experience I had never expected in a million years. And she was always just like, you know, she just really wanted to thank me and have me over and it just didn't work out because of really religious there, you know. Um, yeah, her husband really wasn't up for that, but we, uh, but it was just so eye-opening to me, I guess, that, uh, you know, what, whether, you know, you agree with it or not, what we were doing in Iraq and Baghdad were affecting people and families, and she was coming to me and just thanking me for that, and so I thought I'd share that story because that was one of those times where you're just like, wow, wow. Like this, this just really brought it personal to me and brought it home for me. Um, you know, you know whether you feel like you have an obligation to countries that can't protect themselves or not. I don't know. It's an interesting thing to think about, um, especially with all that's going on with Afghanistan now and pulling out. And I just it kind of really highlights that story for me. I've been thinking about it this week and. Oh, it's hard. There's no easy answers to any of this. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video this week. Um, I know it's a little uh, serious in, in nature, but I thought that you would really enjoy a personal story uh, since it's very relevant right now at the 20th anniversary. So uh, comment below with your story. Let me know your experience or what it was like being in this part of the world in New Zealand, Australia, uh, and what you experienced during 9-11. I would love to hear that. So I'll see you guys next week. Subscribe below. Talk to you later.